So Amit, you mm -hmm. gave a keynote this morning, yep. and you're with Accenture, and you've got some insights of uh, what you're seeing from the yep. customers you work with. Um, one of the themes that came up pretty strongly today in all the keynotes mm -hmm. was machine learning. Yep. Why all of a sudden is this becoming popular? Uh, it's becoming popular because what we're seeing is, in the past, it was um, the, the um, technology was not that great, right? People were still dabbling, uh, didn't quite understand it. It's getting more and more accurate. With the, we're writing better algorithms. And the other thing that we're starting to understand is you close that loop, it starts self-learning. Whereas in the past, we would keep tweaking it. Now we're actually learning that actually you let, let it go, you give it the feedback, the machine gets smarter. The um, processing power is also getting uh, bigger and better, and that's also helping crunch a lot of numbers, right? And quicker. And quicker, right. yeah, and it's right. just a big thing. It's much quicker, and we're also seeing, because of IoT, you're able to get a lot more data, right? And machine learning is all about data. In the past, the a lot of mistakes that we did was um, as, as data scientists, we want to scrub the data, make it perfect. So the machine can learn easier. Machine le learn easier, but actually quicker. that was the wrong thing to do. Machines actually need to see the dirty data, but actually that's where you're going to find the noise and find the problems. So th that's a really good point. So the difference between structured data and unstructured data for machine learning is yep. the difference between cognitive learning and machine learning? Yeah, I mean, cognitive, uh, cognitive learning is very much around reading unstructured content in natural language, right? At the moment, cognitive can only do English language, um, and they're trying to teach uh, Japanese and other characters. Well, there's Is another language? Yeah, there's, okay. a, there's other languages more than English, more than American English, too. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, the systems are getting better um, in, at understanding content. Now, cognitive, the intent of cognitive is to start thinking like a human, right? But it's not quite there yet. It can't, uh, cognitive cannot understand images um, or tables. It can read, it can read, but it can't dis distinguish between figures and pictures, et cetera. Um, but, you know, I see that in a year's time, that will change, right? Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, work happening in that space with combining, this is where we're combining machine language, uh, machine learning with cognitive. You can use machine learning to teach the cognitive engine that what you're looking at is uh, a picture of a car and it's this kind of a car, and then cognitive can then start correlating that information with the, with the content. So you gave an example today of Kasparov and against IBM Watson, mm -hmm. and what was the dilemma there? In oh, no, I, I, I wasn't talking about um, Kasparov and uh, Watson. I was actually talking about the using um, uh, cognitive for sharks. Tracking sharks. Oh, right, right, yeah, right, 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 right. Sorry. Right, right. And so uh, the the discussion around sharks was very much around. At the moment, um, the only way you can identify a shark is a surf lifesaver is out there in the ocean scouting, right, and, and trying to point a shark and he or she gets it wrong most of the time. Uh, with machine learning, you can take the the the, the vision that the surf life is seeing, very quickly use video analytics, with machine learning and figure out whether that fin is actually a shark or a dolphin or whatever, right? And then you can use cognitive to then instruct the, um, uh, the surf life server what to do next, right? Is actually a shark evacuate the, um, uh, the, beach. the beach? Or actually it's not a shark, it's, it's a dolphin, it's a false alarm, don't worry about it. Or it's actually someone drowning, you know, you need to send somebody in to save them. So very different uh, in terms of machine learning will find the insight but using cognitive actually driving the so until action. So until we get there, wouldn't it be just good if you see a fin to get everyone out of the water? Yeah, that's, <laughs> the, well, that's, that's the hysteria <laughs> in Australia at the moment, right? We've, uh, you know, I mentioned we have like 25 shark attacks this summer, and some has just started. So yeah, every, every time someone sees a fin, they run. Right. <laughs> yeah, not a bad so idea. Surf life server doesn't have to do anything. People just go right. Yeah. So this is this is going to improve though, to where you think we can do shark detection in like. Absolutely. I mean, I, I see. You know, uh, we work with clients. We're using drones at the moment for a client in this region where we're flying drones across their plantations, um, and to and with the images we can actually read the canopy and how it's growing, so they can intervene in the crop. So the crop's not going to yield what they need, so they can intervene early before it gets too big and, it, and they lose a lot of money. Um, and you know, has um, great wider ramifications. They can predict more accurately predict their yield um, and, and better price th their product. 
So you guys work on some interesting things, because mm -hmm. I've also heard of Accenture in the U.S. Mm -hmm. using drones in pipelines to detect uh, stress fractures that are going to yeah. make a big mess. For, for, man for maintenance, we also, um, in Russia, uh, with our labs, working on power lines, so remote power lines in Serbia, et cetera. Again, flying drones to to see if there's fires or fallen trees, et cetera, to stop power disruption. All right, so numerous things. We're also doing work in, in this region with uh, shipping companies to track um, uh, how the ships are traveling, what are the sensors predicting, so we can actually help them predict when when the ship will land in port or if there's a maintenance issue coming up, et cetera. So you guys are really taking the, the physical technology in the world and then instrumenting it and getting the data from it to predict what's happening. V very much, so. it's very much about driving the business value for us. I mean, we had our client um, present today, um, uh, uh, Woodside presented alongside with us this afternoon. And that's exactly what they've done. They've used, they've got hundreds of thousands of sensors on their plant. We take that information and we help uh, with their teams and our data science teams work out, predict failure, predict pr production, um, you know, and something like LNG gas is largely dependent on the temperature. The, the temperature will determine how much um, product they actually uh, produce that day as well. So all those factors, um, we actually driving that. But we always focus from a business outcome as opposed to let's just go put a sensor and then see what happens. So yeah. you're, you're kind of, you guys are, it sounds like at the forefront because the, the world of IoT, mm -hmm. most data companies are getting the fact that it's important, yep. but I don't think everyone is there yet. Yeah, no, we, that's quite a uh, right observation. We see, especially in this region, I see the adoption is uh, much faster, like uh, in the resources industry, and utilities, we see a lot of take up of IoT and machine learning and cognitive, they, they get it and trying to make a difference. Um, fair enough, in government uh, in this region, we see that they're adopting these technologies and starting to build, sm uh, so this government here in Singapore is doing Smarter Nations, has been very well publicized. Similarly, a lot of other governments around uh, this region are looking at that. So traditionally, uh, industries that we thought wouldn't do it are actually uh, in the forefront of it, so. Interesting, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Ahmed, if you fast forward 12 months mm -hmm. and we have this conversation mm -hmm. um, here again in Singapore mm -hmm. a week later, yep. what do you think will change in, in, the, in the IoT data world and with Accenture? Well, you know, in 12 months I expect that you will, you will have a lot more of these solutions deployed. You will be, if, if I take an example of another conservative industry like uh, banking, right? Um, you are not going to be uh, getting a mortgage through a mortgage broker or, or basically meeting a branch manager. You'll be doing an online omni-channel uh, and a cognitive machine will be guiding you to the process of buying a house, getting a loan, getting all the conveyancing done. Right? It'll be all done that way. That's what I expect. And I think that's less than 12 months away, I think. People and we can quit ethical nature in there too, Absolutely. so that we don't have like we had the meltdown in the U.S. from pe putting people in houses they couldn't afford? Well, this is the thing, right? Um, in one of the keynotes, someone mentioned Groundhog Day, right? Now, these machines l love Groundhog Day because they, they assess they what happened, yeah. they learn, yeah. right? And the other thing is the consistency you can deliver, right? Um, everybody goes, oh, humans are 100% accurate. Well, we're not, right? Neither is a machine. Machines will also never be 100% accurate, but you know they will always give you the consistent answer, right? It might be the wrong answer, but it'll be consistently wrong. Or it, it also doesn't have the devious nature yes, as well. It, exactly it, right. It can't be devious. That's right. right. Yeah. It's it's not in its nature. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Excellent. so so that's where I see see it going. In 12 months' time, hopefully, I'll be talking to you saying, "Hey, look, I said to you, this is what's going to happen," and yeah, we we're seeing it. We're already seeing cus customers talking about it and wanting to do it. Excellent. Well, we look forward to that conversation Thank next you. year. Thank you, Amit.